Hey guys, welcome back to Hike Oregon. Today I'm here with my great friend and hiking partner, Randy, and we are going to talk about the very controversial subject of weight shaming and gear shaming. Recently, we came to the realization that we were falling into the whole weight game. And I know it's not a game, I know it's a serious thing and you should be conscious about weight when backpacking. But we were going too, too far down the hole. We were nitpicking certain things that just aren't necessary. All of a sudden, we just came to this realization like, what are we doing? And it has to stop. Completely. It has to stop. <laughs> yeah, I have a really great Osprey Aura Pack that I like a lot, but because of watching YouTube and seeing all the re recommendations of the ultralight packs, I was seriously considering ordering a Z-Bax Art Call. We, we both were. We I, both, we both were. have the Osprey Aura and we love them. I love my pack. Um, but for some reason, we just thought, hey, we need to get rid of those. And we were considering spending, you know, upwards of 500 extra dollars on something that really we didn't need. The difference basically between the Osprey Aura and the Z-Pax Arcohol is two pounds. Mm -hmm. Two pounds, So, yes. by the, I mean, by the time you put hip pockets, the pockets and, and that kind pocket, of thing, it was really cool. only a two pound difference. This is what two pounds looks like, guys. So we were going to buy these packs. Like you were like days away days, from ordering. Days away days from away. ordering. And I wasn't actually going to order until she ordered because I wanted to see the pack. Cause... She's smarter than me. <laughs> but we were on a, a recent hike and we were in the car and all of a sudden, like it just came to us all of a sudden, what are we doing? What are we doing? We're not rich people, mind you. <laughs> we're not sponsored by anyone. We're, you know, and we love our pack. So that's the thing it's it was absurd so um, this is kind of goes into how in the YouTube world it's very much I feel like about like keeping up with the Joneses or, or the big guys you know we see all these big youtubers in in the hiking realm of YouTube I'm not gonna name names but you see these you know big YouTube accounts, you know, they go on awesome trips and they have super, super lightweight gear. And I feel like, I don't know, subconsciously, I'm like, I want to be like them, you know? Is that mm -hmm. the yes, same for you? Yes, absolutely. You, yeah. like, look, you, you idolize the, these yeah. people, um, even though you don't yeah. know them, but you <laughs> idolize them and you want to be like them. So you Definitely. buy all this gear that they have or that they have recommended. I mean, you've bought how much gear? A lot, actually. And a lot of it didn't even work for me. I ended up returning it because it wasn't the right thing. But exactly. I thought since I saw it on YouTube and this person that I really admired had it, well, gosh, it must be a great piece of gear. And it is, absolutely, but just not for me. So I had to right. go back and return and get stuff that was right for me, which I should have done in the beginning. And some of the gear worked out. I mean, I have a shirt that really works great um, that I bought as at recommendation from a YouTuber. Uh, we have a few items, but there's many items that didn't work for us. Um, but we bought them anyway, just because we wanted to, you know be cool <laughs> and uh, it's so weird how that works it's like we're back in kindergarten we are. and then in the Facebook realm it's a little bit different I have actually seen actual weight shaming so I follow the PCT you know every year the PCT has like a Facebook group like PCT class of 2018 and so especially last year I followed a lot of what was going on in that Facebook group and there is so much weight shaming that goes on there and it's so unnecessary uh, so we just wanted to kind of bring that to light. That's not to say that we haven't weight shamed. I've never written a comment, oh your pack it needs to be lighter. I've never done that. I will say I've never done that. But like in my head 
I've like seen hikers or watched a video or something like that and been like, uh, you know, so I've definitely, I fall into, I fall into that. I'm sure you guys fall into that, but just be mindful of that. And Randy's going to tell a really great example of a time we definitely gear shamed. <laughs> we did. So we were doing some trail magic for last year's PCT hikers in Oregon. And um, it was all going great, but a couple walked up and they had some very interesting gear. To we'll insert a, a yes. photo here. <laughs> it was quite comical, but I think we went a little too far <laughs> in, <laughs> in laughing. I mean, we didn't laugh at them, but as they were walking away, I, we just busted up laughing. It was, it was bad. And now there is a difference definitely between doing that what we did laughing at these people and giving some helpful tips such as hey if you took the tent out of the actual box and carried it in a different way you could carry water which you had suddenly run out of yeah they asked us for water yeah. they had no water their packs were ginormous and no water zero water yeah. no water filter nothing yeah, yeah. So, I mean, they could have used some helpful tips in a very nice, kind way rather than us trying to hold back the laughter <laughs> and bust up as soon as they get out of earshot. Right. It yeah. pains me to admit that, but yeah. Well, but, you know, we have to let people know that we're not above it, even accidentally. We would never do it to hurt someone's feelings. No. But you still have to be conscious about your inner voice. Yes. Yes, it, because if that inner voice is goes on too long, it could become a YouTube comment. Or just the way you look at someone with what you feel like is inferior gear. You just have to be really careful about that stuff. So I'm going to jump back to YouTube just because that's where I feel like this happens the most. Um, I wonder like when this whole weight thing became such a big deal. I know companies have been going lighter and lighter, you know, as materials get better and stuff like that. But I wonder when it became like this all encompassing. Yeah. It kind of takes the front line in backpacking. It does. And Weight definitely does. And when I see it in, I see it in YouTube the most um, because people search it. Um, you know, ultra light, uh, 11 pound base weight or eight pound base weight or something absurd like that. It's kind of a, a cycle because YouTubers put it in their title, put their base weight in their title, but they're also doing that because people are searching that. And so it's like this weird cycle, but I don't know when it became such a big deal. I agree because like, I don't know, a couple of years ago when I first started really looking at um, even through hikers videos and stuff, I was seeing people hike with um, even mountaineering packs and like three sets of layers and all sorts of things and they were completing their through hike just as much as others were. Now I do realize the value in having a, a lightweight setup if you're going yeah. to be hiking 2,000 plus miles, absolutely of course. but. Most of us are not actually going to be hiking a through hike. So right. we watch through hiker videos and we get all excited, fall down a rabbit hole thinking, oh, I need to spend $500 on a pack that legitimately is not actually good for me. It's not good for me. I needed a, the Osprey or I spent five mm -hmm. months finding that pack. Right. And yet I fall down the rabbit hole. And I think a lot of people do, a lot of folks who watch YouTube fall down that same mm -hmm. rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. Well, and I also feel like there aren't a lot of just backpacking videos. Like, I think sure. people watch the through hikers because that's really the only backpacking videos that are like out there and informative. Yeah. So yes. maybe I that's agree. part of the problem too. But like, okay, 20, 30 years ago, people were backpacking. They were through hiking. They had packs like base weights of 50 pounds, 60 pounds. They carried like, Full you know, on cookware. Skillet, like uh, <laughs> uh, cast iron, like pots and stuff. Like, did they die? No. Did they enjoy the PCT just as much as everyone else is going to? Yes. Guaranteed. They probably enjoyed it, you know, every bit. They were probably slower. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> they probably enjoyed it more because yeah. they might have been slower. Yeah. But that's not to say that just because I have a 16-pound base weight that I can't hike the same amount of miles 
as someone with a 12 pound base weight. Exactly. And I think most people would like to feel comfortable taking whatever setup they have out on the trail and not being shamed for it or looked down on for it or post a question in a Facebook forum mm -hmm. about how yes. can I do this and I not have people lot. say, oh, well, get rid of that pack because you're stupid for carrying blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I had a, someone comment on one of my YouTube videos, the video where I showed all my gear for our three sisters loop. Um, so it was like a four day, which we never got to do <laughs> because of the fires, but I was, you know, prepping and, and showing it on YouTube. So I was showing all my gear and someone commented, it basically weight shaming me, like a perfect example of weight shaming. They're like, well, you need to get rid of all these stuff sacks. You could save so much weight getting rid of these stuff sacks. Mind you, I have three stuff sacks and they each weigh less than half an ounce. So it's like, really? Like, is that necessary? That is not a necessary comment. I feel like unless someone asks a specific question about gear or about weight, it is not necessary to say anything about weight. That is their concern, and if they're concerned about it, they will deal with it. I was talking to someone the other day, and this quote, like, stuck in my head. Unless you are willing to carry my backpack, the pack weight is none of your business. So what I discovered in my journey of setting up my backpacking system is that you do not have to spend a fortune to have a good setup. You don't have to spend a fortune to even have a pretty lightweight setup. Mm -hmm. Where it comes into play is when you're absolutely ounce counting and then you're spending yeah. $500 more for a pack that just weighs a little bit less. So you absolutely don't have to do that. And that's the beauty of REI is that you can go there you can try your things mm -hmm. out like I did with four pairs of trail runners before you five backpacks right fi yes five packs <laughs> before you finally find the one that actually works for you right. and all of your gear has to serve its purpose and it has to work for you not for someone else that you're watching yeah, on and YouTube. not for show going backpacking is not a fashion show or a brand show while I see all of this on YouTube and on social media honestly I can say from my last trip I don't know how it will be on this trip but from my last trip on the PCT and talking with through hikers and stuff like that, I didn't see any gear shaming on the actual trail. So I feel like that lives on social media, which is good. <laughs> so don't think that you need Patagonia this, z packs that, these like name brand things just to go backpacking. You can get an REI jacket. You, It's probably 10 times cheaper than, you know, Patagonia. <laughs> no, for sure. Well, it's at least three Arc times Eric's, cheaper. Yeah. That kind of thing. You know, everything pretty much serves the same purpose. There's just different price points. So you don't have to break the bank to get good gear. Basically, that was our whole video. We just wanted to bring this subject to light uh, just because we've both seen it a lot lately. Been on both sides of it. Yep. And we just wanted to put it out there and it may get some hate. It may get like tons of thumbs up. I don't know. But we just wanted to kind of clear the air because we've seen a lot of weight and gear shaming lately. So we want to put an end to that and make you aware of maybe you're doing it. Maybe you're on both sides of it. Maybe you're getting weight shamed or gear shamed or maybe you're weight shaming or gear shaming someone on YouTube or Facebook. But just because I'm making this video does not mean I'm going to stop talking about weight and how much things weigh. I know that it is important and that you guys want to hear that. You guys want to know how much the backpack weighs. You guys want to know how much my base weight is and that kind of thing. So just know that I will still be mentioning it, but it is by no means the focus of my gear videos. My PCT prep videos are coming up and um, they will have a lot of gear in them. And I want to really highlight the gear and show you guys what I'm taking and talk about the gear. You have to make sure that every piece of gear, whether it be heavy or lightweight or whatever, that every piece of gear adds some sort of value to your hike. So that's kind of how you can not really think about it in pounds and ounces, but rather value. Like, is this going to, you know, like Randy and mm -hmm. I are gonna take a tennis ball. 
um, on our hike. And while that may weigh a few ounces that clearly aren't necessary ounces, but, but we're not taking a racket. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it adds value to us because we both suffer from foot injuries. So it'll add great value to our hike because we can massage our feet with this tennis ball. So you have to look at it that way. There's a fine line between being weight conscious and obsessing over it. You know, as soon as you feel like you're writing down all these numbers and you're adding everything up, you might be starting to obsess and then you get got to take a step back and think about why are you obsessing? Are you obsessing because you want to keep up with the Joneses, the big hiker guys? Or do you just want to prove something to yourself? Hey, I want to go out there with a six pound base weight because I want to prove that I can do this, you know, through hike or whatever hike you're doing with minimal gear. You know, sometimes that's a way to hike if you want to like well, prove that's something. Your goal. Yeah, yeah, totally. People have different goals for their exactly. hikes all the time. You just have to make sure that your gear su- serves your purpose. Right. And you literally have to weigh your options. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next adventure.